Hello, Susanna, and welcome back to another video. Welcome to my kitchen. Things are falling apart already. I just got back from Canada yesterday. I am so jet lagged, like so, so jet lagged. Ignore the mess behind me. I don't know, I'm making avocado toast. So I thought, hey, why not film with you guys while I make this avocado toast, talk a bit, catch up. I feel like we haven't had a video in Berlin in a long time and I need some time to, you know, get over this jet lag. I need some nutritious food. I need to eat this because it's very ripe. And I've got some sliced bread. Germans out there, don't hate me <laughs> for the sliced bread. This is the only sliced bread in Germany that I like. It's called a uh, corner balance and it's whole wheat bread with uh, sunflower seeds and not chia seeds, flax seeds. That's what it is. I am so tired. The whole family, Josh, Kai and I, we woke up at like 3 a.m. today. We could not fall asleep. Jet lag is always worse coming back. But I'm gonna make some avocado toast and then we can talk. I hope that you guys like this, but I'm hungry. Um, yeah, first step, we gotta toast the bread, of course. Actually, no, first step, we're gonna check the avocado to make sure this is a decent one because avocados are just so finicky like that. You never know if that's a good one. And no one gets scared of my cutting skills. All of my friends, family members, whoever see me cut, they get freaked out because I don't know why. Ah, oh, you guys, it's disgusting. I can't eat this. Oh man, I hate avocados. Why? I thought it was perfect. I purposely picked this one up yesterday because it looked perfect. I don't know what I'm gonna eat. I'm gonna show you guys my fridge because it's pretty much empty. We got the bare necessities yesterday. <sighs> my fridge is empty. Look at this. It's, it's a sad, sad time in here, you guys. We got wine that's at least six weeks old. Can't have that for lunch, of course. Yogurt, kimchi that I bought yesterday, half a banana, some blueberries, one carrot, spring onions, and this is dinner, so I'm not gonna touch that. We got nothing, guys. We got nothing. I may just have to do yogurt and granola. I don't want to. I didn't want this at all because I had oatmeal for breakfast and this feels very similar to that, but I'm gonna have to do it. Let's see what granola options we have. This is the yogurt I get here, by the way. The Alpro Natur, uh, like the plain yogurt. That's the one. And I'm gonna do this granola, which I brought from Canada. It's a quinoa granola. I really didn't wanna have this for lunch, but hey, what are you gonna do when your avocado sucks? I just wasted, I think a euro 50 or two euros maybe on that avocado. Okay, I changed my mind. I really don't want yogurt. It's just not calling me right now. We are gonna do the sliced bread. I want some bread and we're gonna do peanut butter with banana slices. Hello, we're gonna make it work. <laughs> I really wanna get to know you guys a lot more. I feel like you guys know quite a lot about me, but I don't really know you guys. And yeah, I just wanna connect more. So let me know what's up in your life. What's something new and exciting happening? Let's keep it positive and light. Let's toast this bread. Oh, just got home, so this is not plugged in. I'm gonna grab my peanut butter, and I, I know I need to clean this up, but first we're gonna eat. Here's the peanut butter. I really do like this peanut butter for any of you who live in Germany. It's the closest that I found to my favorite peanut butter, which is from Whole Foods uh, back in Canada, or you can get it in the US. This one is from Dead Re, and it has to be the one that has this purple logo. That is the best one. And then we're gonna grab that sad banana and I know that as soon as I grab this banana, Kai is gonna come running here. So let's see if I'm right about this. I'm gonna put you guys on the floor to see if he comes when he hears the banana. 
he's really sad by the way like so sad because we left his new best friend leo which is my parents dog and he's super super depressed i can just tell he's really sad but let's see if some banana will cheer him up let's see if he comes running i'm gonna put you guys down here <gasps> oh <laughs> what are you doing there <laughs> guys he's in his carrier hi kai are you sad i thought you were in the bedroom hi baby you're very cute. Sit. Good boy. You like banana? You love banana, right? And speaking of Kai, um, I wanted to answer some questions that I got over on Instagram because as you guys know, uh, Kai did come to Canada with us and I showed a picture of him in the cabin with us right underneath my feet um, and he was sleeping on the plane and a lot of you guys had questions on how it was like to travel with the dog and if I have any tips because a lot of you guys want to do it as well. Um, so I thought it would be good to answer that because I'm sure a lot of you pet parents are out there are also interested. I'm also going to make a tea because we need the caffeine right now. Let's get down to business. Let's talk about the things that I did and that I would recommend if you are traveling with a pet. Um, this was actually something that was super important to me prior to getting Kai. I wanted to make sure that I got a dog that I could take in the cabin with me because traveling is such a major part of my life and I knew that I would want to be able to take my dog back home um, and I would want to travel with my dog. This was actually Kai's second time flying to a different country. Um, we actually went to Madeira, Portugal earlier this year and we had learned a lot of tips because the first trip, not gonna lie, was a disaster. Um, we didn't really prep that much and he was crying a lot on the flight. Thankfully, it was a short flight, but it was quite uncomfortable for us and very, very um, nerve wracking because the flight attendants kept telling us off <laughs> for having him on my lap and, you know, just him making a lot of noise. So we learned a lot of tips and tricks. So first tip that I'm going to give you is you have to mentally prepare that it can be a little bit stressful taking a dog on a flight. You just never know how they're going to react. But I have some tips that you can do prior to actually getting on the flight that I found super, super helpful. And I'm sorry if this is not relevant to everybody, but maybe you can share this info with some of your other friends who want to fly with dogs or maybe just for future knowledge. So the first thing that I would really recommend is at least a month before you're flying out or a few weeks before, make sure that you get your dog used to the carrier. Um, this worked really, really well because Kai got so used to his carrier. As you saw, he was in there right now. I've just left it underneath the island in our kitchen and he goes in there anytime I'm in the kitchen or we're cooking and that's like his little safe space so he really loves his carrier which is so great because you want your dog to be used to being in a carrier while they're in the flight. Technically during the flight you're not allowed to take them out of the carrier or even have the carrier open but I have found that flight attendants are quite relaxed. You can put the carrier on your lap and have your dog there. Um, and you can also open up the carrier so they can see you. Typically, they're quite chill, but by standards, the policy, the carrier is supposed to be underneath the seat in front of you and closed, but I don't think it's expected that you're gonna leave it closed the whole time, and just for your own comfort, you can open it up. I think it's gonna be okay. What I did is I put the carrier underneath the kitchen island, which is here. Uh, this is where I'm sitting at right now, and this got him really used to him knowing that I'm sitting here and he's going to be underneath and it kind of preps him for the flight because again, he needs to be underneath the chair in front of me. And what I would do is I would just leave treats in the carrier when he wasn't looking 
So when he would pass by the carrier, he would see that there was treats in there. And so he got really used to it and he thought it was a really good thing to be in the carrier as well. I would also train him. So if at any point I was giving him a treat throughout the day, I would say, go to bed. And when he went into his carrier, which is bed, he got a treat. So again, it just made it like a really friendly and fun place for him. So that was extremely important. And this was something that we didn't do for the first flight when we went to Portugal. And I definitely learned my lesson and that was super helpful. The other thing I would say is that for a longer flight, we did give him something, a gel that you can put in his gums that makes him more calm. It doesn't sedate him at all, so it's not one of those things that just knocks him out completely. It's something that was recommended for his from his vet, and it's something that's just gonna calm his nerves because Kai does have a bit of anxiety. He is a barker by nature. Um, and so we didn't want him to be anxious being in the bag for too long, especially when it was closed. Um, so we did get a gel. I'll put the name up right here, but of course, talk to your vet about it and see what's the right approach. I would not uh, sedate him at all or knock him out at all. Um, I, I don't think that's good, but um, you do you as a dog parent, you'll know what's best. But the gel was really good for boarding on the plane, especially for a flight to Canada because it is a nine hour flight. Also, I had some questions about what to do about bathroom breaks. If your dog has to pee or poo, what do you do if you're on a long flight? So number one tip here is don't give your dog any food or water at least one hour before the flight and make sure that you take them out for a long walk prior to your flight as well. Make them as tired as possible. For the flight that we just got on, um, it wasn't leaving until 5 p.m. Toronto time. So from 8 a.m. in the morning from when he woke up, I was playing with him, I took him on long walks, I didn't let him sleep at all. So when it was time to get on the plane, he was already very, very tired and he was very relaxed. So that was a big, big bonus, of course. And then in terms of foods and treats while you're on the plane, you can give them little treats. Uh, make sure you know what your dog loves. If they love a particular treat, um, give them small pieces of that so that they can chew on. I'm gonna get one toy that he really loves. Give me one second. This thing was a lifesaver. My mom had this for her dog, Leo, so I got it while I was in Canada. It's called the West paw design and it's a little toy where you can put treats on either end and in the middle and they just chew on this for a long time and they try to get the treat out so it keeps them really busy and I like this because it takes them a long time to eat it and you can also control the amount of treats that you put in here so this was a really great toy for him to have on the plane um, lifesaver and I just recommend this in general even if you're not flying get this for your pet they will absolutely love it they go crazy for this I'm sure he'll bark at me soon because he sees me holding it whoever invented this toy thank you you're a genius Kai nope he's too busy <laughs> I also recommend having a little toy in there that they find comforting like a little stuffed animal or a chew toy that's doesn't have any food on it so that they feel more comfortable in the carrier. Um, but yeah, those are the main uh, tips that I have for when it comes to flying with dogs. Now make sure that prior to your flight, you check with your airline that you are allowed to take dogs. I found that the majority of airlines, especially in Europe, they don't allow dogs. So the ones that we have flown with are KLM, which by the way was amazing. The staff is so nice and so friendly towards dogs and so, so helpful. Um, so I loved flying with KLM um, to Canada. And we also flew with TAP Portugal when we went to Madeira. Not one of my favorite airlines, to be honest. I found the flight attendants to be very rude and snappy towards me. Um, and Josh <laughs> when we were taking Kai. So it's really hit or miss, but overall I found KLM to be really great. But just make sure that prior to booking your flight, you make sure that you can take a dog in the cabin with you. 
and you typically have to make a reservation prior um, to your flight as well. So make sure that you add your dog to your ticket and you do usually have to pay a fee for the flights that you're taking. So for instance, for KLM, it was 125 euros each way to take Kai, which I thought it was quite reasonable and way cheaper than, you know, getting a dog sitter to take care of him while we were gone because we were gone for six weeks. So that was a long time. But yeah, just be patient with yourself, be patient with your dog and it's totally worth it. And just know that maybe the first few flights are not going to be the smoothest, but I hope that you find these tips helpful. Another update that I wanted to give you guys is something I haven't mentioned yet, but it's definitely something very exciting that I have launched and it is a jewelry line. It's called Sunny Bird Jewelry. I have the little logo here and you know, some cards <laughs> that we send out whenever you place an order. But this is my new passion project. I have always wanted to start a jewelry line and I did so a few weeks ago. I am wearing a necklace from one of our newest collections that is launching very, very soon, which I'm super stoked about. Um, everything is ethically sourced in Colombia. You guys know uh, my family is from Colombia and everything is then packaged and assembled in Berlin by me. Um, and I ship everything out to you guys as well. So yeah, it's a really fun thing that I'm doing now. It's a new thing for me entirely. I've never sold physical products or started a business like this. So if you guys are interested in jewelry, definitely feel free to check it out. I'll leave the website down below. It's called Sunnyberg Jewelry. And yeah, it's just something I'm very, very hyped about and also um, nervous about because starting a new business is definitely nerve wracking but I know it's gonna be worth it because I'm so passionate about jewelry. You guys always see me wear jewelry and I have so many ideas for the brand. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Even if you're not able to purchase anything from the website right now, it would mean so much if you could follow our Instagram. It's at Sunnyberg Jewelry and I'll be posting a bunch of videos there too. Um, so yeah, that's how you can support my small business. It would really, really mean a lot to me. I'm very excited to keep building this brand and any support that you can send my way, any well wishes, please feel free to do so. It truly means so much. Um, so yeah, that is Sunnyberg. But those are pretty much the updates I have for today. My jet lag is definitely uh, kicking in right now. I'm gonna go ahead and eat my peanut butter sandwich, which is definitely not what I wanted to eat and not how I wanted to kickstart my health journey again. I feel like I need to detox after Toronto. If you saw my last video, you know I mentioned how much junk <laughs> I was eating. Good junk, junk that I missed, but definitely not healthy stuff. So yeah, I didn't want to start off my day with a peanut butter banana sandwich, but here we are because my avocado was a piece of crap. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting the channel and supporting me. It means so much. And I will talk to you guys all in my next one. Cheers.